Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at day two of the DataWorks Summit in the heart of Silicon Valley in San Jose. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host George Gilbert. We've had a great day and a half so far. So much energy, so much buzz about the next leg of, um, of the IT trends. We are here with a couple of gentlemen next. Alex Chen, the Director of Storage for IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. And we also have Nadim Ashkar, Field CTO and Global Head of Technology Alliances and Partner Engineering from Hortonworks. Thank Welcome, you. good to ha have you guys on. So, one of the things um, yesterday was the big news about the, the IBM announcement, um, really the extension of the, of the partnership from a technical perspective and a go-to-market perspective. But Alex, I want to talk to you as the Director of Storage for IBM. Um, there's really been quite, quite a bit of news from IBM and Hortonworks in the last maybe eight yeah. months. So talk to us about kind of the evolution of some of the certifications uh, and, and what where you are now and then we'll kind of get into the data science experience. Certainly, certainly. So uh, I would say that our server colleagues have you know sort of started the relationship last year and we are following very shortly with uh, also a, a certification work that's, uh, that's underway. Now it's being, now it's certified uh, between storage and also uh, uh, Hortonworks. And uh, the work, you know, really started beginning of this year. We have been doing testing for six months, um, you know, nightly test, and uh, to make sure the environment is solid and sound and proven for our customer. And uh, we're basically ready to go for both the uh, uh, all version of essentially uh, Hortonworks. So Nadeem, you as a field CTO, mm -hmm. you were saying you engage with big customers globally. You're also the head of technical alliances, mm -hmm. and you work a lot with, with Alex. Talk to us about what this means, the evolution from a server certification, a storage certification with IBM, now with IBM standardizing on HTTP as their Hadoop distribution, mm -hmm. Hortonworks standardizing on uh, IBM as their data science yep. platform. Talk to us about what you're seeing in the field, how, how is the field, the customers, driven this technology alliance to grow? I guess, uh, uh, thank you so much for asking this question, uh, and just to kind of give you a little bit of uh, background about this relationship. Uh, we started with, uh, as Alex mentioned, with the power certification, uh, which the power is an open, uh, open hardware. Think about that, just like the way Hadoop is an open source software, Power is a completely open hardware. That's where we started our relationship. Uh, and very quickly, then Spectrum Scale team, Storage team figured it out. That's, 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 that's the future of that. How can we bring value to their existing customer and new customer to, uh, to attach all the engines which uh, Hortonworks provide, our open source uh, community provide, to attach to their existing data sets to bring value to the customer. And, and now this relationship has actually gone beyond that where both teams feel very compelling reason that uh, um, we are doing a lot of great work around the data space and IBM is doing a lot of great work in the data science uh, side. Combining these two to, uh, together is going to bring a lot of value to the customer. And, and, and you will start seeing that our customers uh, are super excited about this news. Um, we have constantly been talking about it uh, with them and getting feedback from them. And the reaction is amazing uh, because there were certain limitations of Hadoop. Through this partnership, we are trying to solve that. And at the end of the day, customer is a winner here. Just let me follow up on that about the limitations in Hadoop. Is is that, and especially the way you, you express the, we we want to enable customers to bring compute or analytics to their existing data assets. So, were those data assets sort of on um, shared storage, whether in NAS or SAN configuration? And then the idea being that you can have a compute cluster that's sort of separate, so you can expand or collapse the amount of of horsepower you're devoting mm -hmm. to data that's stored separately. Okay, I, I guess I'll take that one. Um, so first of all, it's both, and uh, the reason is, first of all, Spectrum Scale has been a you know very successful product for quite some time. Uh, it's number one in HPC, in special commercial HPC. Um, we have, you know, we publicly say today that we have over 4,000 customers. Um, so, and you know, we're in a lot of, uh, 
large HPC deployment, whether it's commercial or it's a research HPC. So there's a large number of uh, customers already deploying spectrum scale in a, in a multi-hundred petabyte fashion with tens of billion files. Like some of our customers have 10 billion files. Right, so, and it's the ability to, as you grow deeper and as we venture deeper into machine learning, deep learning, the amount of analytics over a larger number of data sets is only going to get to grow. It's not just about the data that your sensor generated, but also perhaps you will bring weather data, or perhaps you bring other data that somebody else generated, on, and even in the cloud. And, and so the data set will continue to grow, and only through more data will you become more, in, or the machine, or the analytics engine, will your model become more complete and more, more uh, smarter and more refined. So as we, you know, that's just, we're only at the beginning of all this explosion about using, you know, using, using analytics to be able to make the right business decision. And the key of that is to incorporate more data into your analytics engine. And Spectrum Scale allow you to do that. The data you have, every, everywhere, uh, data you even did generate, you can bring in into this, uh, into this uh, data platform. So just to just to follow up on that, the, when you're talking about high performance compute, that's generally a different configuration from, um, as far as I understand, like uh, traditional um, shared storage. That this is makes it much easier um, to sort of have the different compute nodes mm -hmm. communicate with each other. Can you tell us more about the use cases that are appropriate for Spectrum? Yeah, sure. So it, the re the reason, and go back to the or, your original question, is is, is this only uh, have to be a NAS storage, or is this still share nothing? Is is we really have both modes. You can deploy. It's a software defined storage with flexible deployment model, which you can deploy in a share nothing mode in on servers, storage servers potentially, and uh, it will do data protection across the different servers. Um, or you, if you believe your compute to storage ratio, where you have a lot more data and a lot less for compute, you, you could uh, uh, separate the data out into a shared storage pool, where, uh, and it, that shared storage pool is also completely scale out, so you can scale the shared storage pool uh, as your capacity grows, performance and capacity. So both, both are you know, flexible, and, and not only that, we also, it's because it's self, the beauty of software-defined storage, IBM's number one software-defined storage, and this is the key component of that, is that you can deploy on flash, you can deploy on disk. We also have connectors that allow you to do hybrid cloud, so you can move to, uh, to the cloud storage. Or we even have some cases where people are, are, are moving data to tape via our spectrum archive or, or uh, LTFS linear file system to make tape cartridges look like drives and that, you know, those are inactive data that you can move off. So, the beauty is the software-defined storage, maximum flexibility. So guys, talk to us about kind of where the customers came into play, the sort of, or did they drive this tighter partnership, this tighter alliance on the technology side? Um, maybe, Nadim, I'll ask you from your perspective, what were you hearing from existing Hortonworks customers in the enterprise? And then say, Alex, same question to you about really so, driving so, this partnership. So one of the most amazing thing about this particular relationship and also around this thing, what is happening is that a lot of our customers have petabyte scale data sitting in spectrum scale and other storage mechanisms and stuff like that. And, and they're not interested to set up a separate cluster for Hadoop uh, where they need thousands of nodes and then there is a huge data movement from spectrum scale to Hadoop cluster to make it work for them. Uh, what we are bringing to the value to the customer in this scenario is that you keep your data over there, whatever you are doing HPC around that, you keep doing that, but now you have all the open source tool available to you which are attached to that and you can do Spark, Hive, all other engines run on the same data which is getting generated, read, access from a lot of other applications. So that's what, that is exactly what our customer wanted. I don't want to do data movement, I don't want to make a copy of the data. What, how can you help me here to solve that problem for me? And, and as we look at data in motion versus data at rest, structured, unstructured, semi-structured, mm -hmm. one of the things actually that was talked about today was um, this now end-to-end -end data in motion yep. capability of, of data flow and that it's really now much more complete than it was in the last couple yep. of years. Tell us about that, what, and from, a, from an enterprise customer perspective, um, 
where, where does that come into play in terms of facilitating that and partnering with with IBM on the data science platform so, side? So that's a great question which you're asking. So uh, as uh, Alex mentioned, spectrum scale can be run in multiple fashions. Uh, spectrum scale can run on power hardware as well. And power is already certified on HDP and they're already certifying on HDF. So, yeah. and also as uh, 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 on power, when people are running clusters, it brings 3x efficiencies in terms of performance and cost-wise. So now you have end-to-end -end play where your data is on uh, store in spectrum scale fashion on power hardware, which has a support for GPU, CPU, and it has a support from end-to-end -end from streaming all the way to the data at rest kind of use cases. Uh, at the end of the day, you, you will see that it will bring a lot of value to the customer from the cost perspective, from the uh, accessibility perspective, and from the connected data platform perspective. Um, you said, uh, one thing that came out that actually made this seem really really clear was the, you know, we've got this um, share, software-defined storage that's shared that we use for high-performance compute mm -hmm. uh, use cases. Um, so this would this sounds like an example where you would take the Hadoop ecosystem related analytic capabilities and project them onto these yep. devices that have that are running the software defined storage. Exactly. Yes. So are you bound, it's going to sound technical, but it's, um, are you saturating the network? Are you constrained on how you're moving the data around? Or are you constrained by the processing, you know, uh, when you're trying to basically crunch through a, view, a big job. Where, uh, where's the bottleneck? So, um, I'll take that. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, Spectrum Scale is uh, a parallel file system. So there is no single bottleneck as such uh, over right. here. Uh, and that is the core value. So on one side, you could have your HPC computer attached to Spectrum Scale. On the other side, you could have uh, uh, your HDP cluster attached to Spectrum Scale. And you, uh, without affecting any of those things, you can do a lot of the things in parallel. And without saturating your network, without saturating uh, your uh, uh, IO on the file system and stuff like that kind of thing. So that, that's the, uh, think about that. Uh, like uh, when Alex was talking about, in HPC use cases, you are generating ton of data. Today, unfortunately, you don't have tools to kind of access the data to set scale, to drive value out of that. After HPC, what essentially is working, what essentially is happening. But through these tools, now you can actually get to that level where it can provide you that. And uh, uh, so far, we haven't seen any kind of limitations around the networking and IO, which uh, will limit that uh, adoption. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for talking about the technical partnership with IBM and Hortonworks. It sounds like it's just really, there's a tremendous amount of inertia and momentum there, and we wish you continued success with that. And uh, we want to thank you for stopping by the Cube and uh, having a chat with, okay. with George and I. Thank you. And for my co-host, George Gilbert, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube live from day two of the DataWorks Summit, hashtag DWS17. Stick around, we'll be right back.